Good afternoon. It is a real pleasure to be able to be talking about data and identity, to actually follow someone like Schumann, who has always inspired me to reflect about the extreme present, but also about the near future that sometimes we fear. I want to thank Beatrice for being someone who actually has always managed to really understand what that actually beyond future looks like. She has always managed to take the risk to invite people to present things that might change things. So today I'm here to present a project that probably doesn't need a presentation. Architecture in Translation is a project that in fact started yesterday. But it's a project that actually we have witnessed today. All of us, we have spoken in English. Some of us have tried to actually speak in other languages, even if it was just an attempt. But what is interesting is that 10 years ago or 20 years ago, this lecture would have happened with multiple languages. English has become the hegemonic language of academia, of media, of everything we do. And the truth is that even if architecture, we believe that might be a discipline that has a kind of autonomous field of expertise and knowledge, it is true that architecture as a discipline that has the privilege, but as well, if you want the obligation to articulate the social, the economic, the cultural, the political in a collective aspiration, does speak languages. We forget that over the last 100 years, the project of globalization has produ produced a space of hegemony. And it is that this space of hegemony that actually carries within itself ideologies, agendas, and spaces. We are actually going to take the world and take the world and expand it and really turn it and look at it in the way in which we are inhabiting it. We need to start to slow down to actually speak all those languages that carry cultures, that carry methods, millennial forms of putting stones together, as we saw this morning, that allow us to think about our relationships, about our cities, about how do we want to answer the very simple question of how do we want to live together. Of course, I'm speaking here as the director of the Architectural Association, and Beatrice, who obviously is always extremely wise, said, if I don't assume everyone knows what the AA is. It's only a place that the architectural cognoscenti know what is about. And I said, and she said, why don't you explain a bit what the Architectural Association is? And, and that's a hard task. The Architectural Association was founded 172 years ago by two pupils who actually refused to accept the status quo about how one actually would become an architect. They decided to start an architectural school that would question the ways in which we learn, teach, and produce knowledge. And those two students then through a night school and a series of experiments and pedagogy and ideas, ultimately transform space now in the middle of London, in Bedford Square, in one of the incredible institutions that today still shape the way in which we teach, think, and produce architecture. But interestingly enough, this campus in Bedford Square can be presented and represented in many ways. I'm like, how am I going to explain an institution that has been so important in the redefinition of many ways of thinking about architecture, through its spaces, through its walls? Probably not. Through its events and the ways in which actually we engage with rigor and madness? Probably not. Through the technology? No, through some of the events that actually almost blow the building up? Probably not. Through the incredible publications and voices and agents? This is a publication by Schumann, by the way. Um, probably not. Through the alumni that actually shape uh, the future of architecture, the architecture that we are living in today? Maybe that's an easy way. This is actually someone who many of you might recognize. Denise Scott Brown holding the camera, looking into Las Vegas to actually learn it anew and transform how we actually think about architecture and language. And so what is interesting about the institution that I am now uh, directing is that we have an incredible list of alumni that have really truly shaped the way in which we think about architecture today. But each one of them spoke a language, carried a legacy, and looked into the world differently, as all the students that graduated last year or the ones that I'm actually sitting on those steps. I'm not going here to explain you about the grandiosity of the school in its history, but about its present. And how, in fact, an institution that can actually make jokes about itself, this actually is a fake sign that a student produced, um, is really, really, truly trying to think about diversity, something that we all hear about every single day. This is a diagram that actually we produced the first week in which, when I arrived at the AA, that represents 
81 nationalities. And of course, when one looks into the world and one truly tries to understand architecture, one likes to think into projects and the ideas that the school really, truly produces. But they said, I know architecture, but let's look into something else. I know that each one of those students carries something more than that. We started looking into who we are, where are the students, where they are coming from, and we are almost like a Noah's Ark, one person from each country, uh, really bringing with them not only ideas, but also politics and economics and ways of actually really understanding the world differently. And I think that that's something that we terribly need. And so when we think, we're thinking about what is that that we do in the school, of course we deal with issues of rigor and madness, and this is the essence of the institution, but it is an essence that actually needs to be translated, not only into different languages, but also into binary code, if you want, because it is true that algorithms are the ones and AI they are going to actually even drive our conversations. But it is through this space of really trying to understand our position in the center of London, but ultimately not only in the center of London, but in relationship to the globe, that we are trying to understand a role as an institution that has produced agendas and pedagogies that have influenced and that have shaped the way in which architecture is taught in many other places. So, trying to understand ourselves as this kind of tiny spot in the world and at the same time within the globe. When I arrived a year and a half ago, I asked Maria Giudici, who is our new head of publications and the editor of AA Files, to produce um, a new issue of AA Files, one of our like, fantastic uh, 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 publications and institution has produced over the years, and to produce an entire lexicon, a new lexicon, new terms of engagement a set of conversations with academic staff, students, but also other voices that are around the world in architecture, in design, in poetry, in politics, in philosophy, in human rights, to come and have a series of conversations about the issues that we believe are important today. Because one of the things that we are having a lot is this, it's presentations. How many of us are actually looking into YouTube presentations of 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes? All of us. But how many conversations do we have that truly transform the way in which we think? Not that many. And so conversations is that what actually we're trying to do. But more importantly is to actually produce a series of terms. And those terms actually need to be redefined and sometimes they need to be reproduced. And how does one do that? We are actually going to say that aesthetics, probably one of the most important terms within architecture, anything that actually can bring us all together is our understanding when Beatrice started this morning and say, incredible architecture that we are in. That is aesthetics. But aesthetics are also politics. And the truth is that aesthetics today at the AA are not only articulated through actually a regime that we have inherited, but we are trying to produce a new aesthetic regime that allows us to redefine the way in which politics, ethics, economy are articulated. And this is the task that we all have in this room, because the interesting thing about this event is that I do believe that my task is to bring together people, ideas, in towards action, is to actually rethink the aesthetic project and the aesthetic regime that surrounds us. And so this is a project that one of our graduating students, the one that was sitting one of those steps, produced. I want you to look at it for a second. It was fashionable to believe that historians are liars. Julius Caesar, Winston Churchill, very good writers, but total liars. Historians with their vested interests, have no reason to tell you the truth. When the objects were released from the open prisons to the utopian cities, they were no longer manacled by their colonial past. For decades, doppelgangers of the remains found their place in the city, reappropriated, perhaps, by imagined communities in the guise of Benedict Anderson. The difference is they no longer speak on behalf of their motherland. Aesthetics, politics, ideas of belonging, translation, digitization, colonialism, these are all terms that actually we know we need to address, but how do we actually start mapping them out and produce an entire new set of aesthetic objects that allowing us to actually answer those questions that we have? What is incredible about running a school like the AA is that it is in the students that one finds the answers. The only thing that one can do is to formulate the questions. And it is through projects like this that one starts to think and reflect about what is that that we do as an institution. And while we have been using many times over the last few decades the idea of like disciplinary inquiry, 
or disciplinarity. What is true is that, in fact, at the architectural session, that what we do is not to build those walls that actually try to separate us. I'm not going to use any academic jargon today, but in fact, what we try to do is to bring those walls down to try to engage with as many people as possible. And it is this idea of like caring, and not only caring about each other, but also caring about the planet, that I think has become extremely important. This is a project by Ryan Cook, also one of those students in the steps, that actually tries to care, and care very radically. World War E. World War E is a reflection on the role of the architect today, exploring a way of redeploying the architect skill set to respond directly to situations of urgency and crisis. Through a series of land change strategies targeted at designated sites within the UK, the project aims to establish more extensive efficient and diverse habitats in the loopholes of a post-EU, post-common agricultural policy Britain. Maintaining a belief in the possibility for institutions to shape and inform collective and individual action, the project introduces a new institution, the Environmental Defence Agency, as a merger between existing environmental bodies and the logistics of the UK Ministry of Defence. Ultimately, the project is an exploration of the paradigm of a new citizen, politics and state to be born out of a period of climatic war. Some of these projects, one could actually not even teach them. They can only emerge. And what is interesting about this is that, in fact, of course, one could say that architecture is always translating social and political desires into particular forms of collective aspiration and drawings, images, and forms of action. The new environmental defense agency is definitely a project that I'm interested in. And of course, the idea is that what I've been doing over the last year is to look into student projects and to rethink about education. What does education mean today? At the AA, education has taken the form of units, of postgraduate programs, of PhD programs. We have right now 847 students, 249 academic staff, 10, 110 staff that actually makes everything work. But interestingly enough, sometimes one needs to go back not just into the recent present, but actually in the recent past, and to go beyond that what actually has happened within the walls of the school. Over the last 10 years, the school has produced the visiting school, series of workshops and programs that over the last 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2 years, we have been engaging with individuals, institutions, and places to really try to understand what it means to produce architecture globally. But what it means to actually really understand it from local desires. Each one of these visiting schools actually allowed me to really think of the school as a kind of a global enterprise. And one that allowed me to not actually think of a colonial project or an imperial project edu educationally or pedagogically, but in fact of a project that allows us to really think of the school as a nomadic project. What we are doing right now, and I'm saying this because that's the near future, we are actually re-articulating all those different visiting schools through different threads that will allow us to think of global nomadic masters. You will be able to come to the school and educate yourself, not by being in a classroom, but by, in fact, either through issues of technology or environmental or critical thinking or sustainability, engage with different locations around the world to understand what is that global desire, but from a specific local understanding. And it is so important for me to actually look into what is that that the EA has been doing over the last 172 years and take my responsibility, if you want, and my role as the new director and shape its near future. So the idea of architecture in translation is one that does not only translate languages, but also translates different different forms of doing, different forms of making. This morning we heard about the kind of project that allowed to save the way in which masonry and stones were put together. That is also part of an idea of architecture in translation. And of course it is through this idea of understanding how do we, how do we really think about the idea of the other and how ethics is in fact a project of resistance and how do we really start redefining what it means to engage with this other. We have started a series of laboratories and a series of projects that allow us to really rethink the way in which we can engage with different ways of thinking and doing. The Wood Lab is something that actually is going to allow us to engage with a campus that we have in Dorset that has been looking into the way in which we produce uh, architecture through the thinking of wood and our relationship with nature. How do we really start thinking of education as something that goes outside of the school, of the walls? How do we think of architecture as something that really produces research to engage with the forces of political and economic power? This lab, the ground lab, that actually is in partnership with the uh, Inter-American Development Bank, has been looking into patterns of migration and into patterns of movement within the globe to really try to understand how do we actually modify 
and at the same time participate. If architecture has always been complicit, if you want, with the forces of capital, in fact, we are the ones who are constantly building the borders, the architectures, the luxury homes that we are criticizing. How do we actually produce those documents and those forms of visualization that allow us to think about population growth, that really allows us to really think about the way in which the world is, in fact, at the space of design? The idea of actually translating that information into something that is legible is part of our task. Representation in architecture is one of the essential tools that we have to really shape the world and to change it. So it is in this act of trying to expand, if you want, the horizons of the possible, that the Architectural Association is trying to identify all those spaces of action. So from the wood lab to the ground lab, of course, we move into the closing space of, of what is that that actually I'm trying to explain here today, that is this act of translation. And translation is not just you know, an act of really trying to understand countries, nationalities. Um, in fact, it's about moving beyond those nationalities into something that goes beyond identity. I always say I'm not a nationalist, but I'm a culturalist. I occurs in Catalan. I dream in English. And it is in this act of really trying to, if you want, a, 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 understand that the AA as an institution doesn't have this logo of two AAs symmetrically with each other. The AA is this, is this, is this, is this. The AA is this space of asymmetry, is this space of engagement that really allows us to understand that in fact we are constantly engaging with a global world that demands and requires that we always think about this other. And it is through this space of other that actually I believe today architectural education needs to change. A year ago, actually two days from today, but a year ago, the New York Times published an article of an academic staff from a university here in the US who asked a student, please do not speak in Chinese. We would like you to speak in English. We can't. We shouldn't. We actually need to celebrate and to cherish those spaces of difference. And that is actually even more important when we see actually nationalisms being spread and forms of hegemony being produced in ways that actually we cannot tolerate anymore. And it is through the spaces of academia and resistance that we need to do so. So yesterday I was here and I wasn't in London when we started the first event that is going to help us build a multilingual dictionary of architectural terms, a jury in translation in which we had the students and translators and everyone really trying to engage into a space of difference and identifying those terms that actually cannot be translated that do carry special social and specific architectural connotations. Of course, we also celebrated the Chinese New Year. So the Architecture in Translation project is an, is an open one. Somehow it started yesterday, it's presented here today, and I invite everyone to participate in it so that ultimately what we can produce this open source, multilingual dictionary of architectural terms where everyone, absolutely everyone, can be invited to really define and redefine and to amplify that space that is the horizons of the possible. We need to think of architecture beyond the media that actually allows us and forces us to produce those fantastic images of uh, aesthetics uh, uh, in a form that actually is obsolete. We need to actually take those aesthetics and take them into the next dimension. I simply want to say thank you for inviting me here. I actually am not going to try to uh, speak too many languages. No més parlo català, castellà i possiblement alguna altra llengua més. Però uh, what is incredible to say is that I think we all do need to start looking to the world with a much more expanded sense of who we are and what the others know. Thank you so much.